During the age of glaciers, the fertile fields in Minnesota were covered beneath a thick carapace of ice. Over several thousand years, that ice would melt and it would leave a depression, and that depression fills with water today, and that's a wetland. Many parts of the Prairie Pothole region, historically, the density of these wetlands was as much as 100 per square mile in some of the densest areas. We may be the land of 10,000 lakes, but we were once the land of 10 million wetlands. This landscape remained unchanged for the first 100 years of our country's history. However, in the middle 1800s, water and wetlands became a central issue for pioneers attempting to settle in Minnesota. A society that can't bring water in will, will perish, and a society that can't push water out will perish. So the manipulation of water is not a choice once you've reached a level of complex society. In fact, you can't have a complex society on any other condition rather than manipulating waters. Water is a cost. I mean, to, to get rid of it or bring it, it's, it's a cost. It will cost you labor, it will cost you machinery. For the earliest farmers, wetlands, especially those shallow wetlands, made farming unpredictable and risky. Farmers' acreage rose and fell with the, with the water levels, actually. And a lot of farmers decided, well, if we can hay these sloughs off in dry years, why can't we drain them and use them all the time? My mother and I were told at the time that we would never have to fertilize that land. It would, it would grow all these crops for years and years and years. And, and all that happened was that every time we had a uh, excessive rain, it would flood our crops out. And uh, it made no sense to do what they did back in those days. But those early Minnesota farmers were ingenious and exceptionally hardworking. It didn't take long before they discovered that draining wetlands could turn the cost of water into an investment. When the farmers were out here, why not get rid of the wetlands? More farms, lower prices, more land, get rid of the mosquitoes. You can drive your cart from one place to another without having to go around or without getting stuck. There was every reason you'd want to get rid of water at that point, and the government was fully behind you. Minnesota was just a new state, and in 1860, they were included in those Swamplands Act. I think they got jurisdiction over about 5 million acres of land to drain, and a lot of that was agricultural land. And so those state projects started in the 1860s, they didn't really develop a good water policy or drainage policy until about 1887. Bull ditchers came around and uh, they were essentially teams, uh, men that owned these large teams of oxen. And the only way that they had to drain some of these smaller wetlands was to dig a, a ditch and drain them out. And, so they'd have teams of 10 to 15 oxen attached to a huge, almost like a moldboard plow, and that plow would just simply dig a ditch from the wetland out to the nearest outlet, which would be a creek. Draining wetlands required years of incredible effort, but the work enabled farmers to create a stable life out on the rugged prairie. The wetland that bordered on the Hartkopf farm was known as Mud Lake, it flooded every spring with rain and snow melt. It was poor land for growing crops, but that didn't keep his neighbors from trying to drain it. It was a decision that confronted many families across Minnesota. Drain a shallow wetland and increase your farmland and possibly your profit. As we progressed and got larger machinery and things, that, that what we started out with, that. 12 and 14 acre fields, now all of a sudden became a real hindrance to that farming because it's, we all like to have a full 160 acres that we can drive from one end to the other. And all those things encourage drainage. In the early 1900s, the bull ditchers became steam ditchers and the rate of drainage across Minnesota increased exponentially as machine technology advanced. Though draining wetlands was a relatively new event on the Minnesota frontier, sportsmen immediately noticed the effect. 
They would spend days out hunting. And they often were the ones who were protesting. They were the ones who saw an environmental uh, impact of losing these wetlands, that they were going to be losing hunting land, they were going to be losing places where their families could swim and picnic. Um, and they often led the charge, like today. Despite these early protests, the push to maximize crop production had just too much momentum. After the World Wars, the U.S. government saw agriculture as a means for shoring up the country's food supply and securing America's place in global politics. America was now being perceived as the entity that was going to feed the world, and so there was a big incentive to put the, the, the latest and greatest technology into the hands of farmers, and one of the things they used it for was increased drainage of wetlands. Most of our ditches in Minnesota were created prior to 1940. You know, say by 1940, 45, we had about 27,000 miles of ditch in Minnesota. But we were also tiling, uh, farm tiling was becoming more and more efficient, so we were tiling more and more water into those ditches. You're going to be prone to find tiling with farmers who have excess capital for investment because it does cost money. They're going to tend to have flatter land. And they're going to be in counties where the ditch systems are more articulated, probably in most cases, because then they can feed the tiling into those systems. Then we start to see flooding, possibly. We start to see um, watersheds jumping their banks and going into other watersheds. By the 1970s, the landscape of Minnesota had been completely changed. If you're sitting in southwest Minnesota or northern Iowa, you're probably looking at wetland drainage rates that exceed 90, 95 percent. That means fewer than 10 percent of your natural wetlands remain, and there are many watersheds where there are no small depressional wetlands left. American agriculture had entered the modern age. Maintaining high production meant using every possible acre. This also meant less time and fewer resources farmers could devote to keeping their land clean. In order to farm huge acreages, you know, they need huge machines. They don't have time to do the recycling, so they have to put in chemical inputs, fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides. So to me, We've lost that close connection that the earlier farmers had with the land, and today it's following the desires of the big corporations and their inputs.